In this video, I'll show you how problems with 240 volt outlets can be detected using both the traditional multimeter as well as the low Z meter. This video is intended for professionals that have a need to conduct such tests. For safety reasons, I recommend wearing rubber gloves and safety glasses at all times. So I've already determined this voltage source, this outlet here, is compromised. We tested it using this traditional voltmeter and it tests fine. But when it's under load, when the appliance is plugged into it, it fails. So how can you test this outlet? I'll show you two ways. One way to test it without a low Z meter and the preferred way to test it with a low Z meter. Without a low Z meter, you can still test it, but you need to test it with the appliance plugged in. So instead of unplugging the appliance, you can pull it partially out and have the blades exposed. Now these blades are live, so now I'm using these insulated meter probes as well. So they're just a tiny bit of the probe is sticking out so you don't cross anything. You should, you should get 245 volts from here to here, leg to leg. What I'm getting with the dryer plugged in is 156 volts. So what does that tell us? Well, that tells us that one of these legs is compromised. It is being pulled toward each other. All that does is that tells us that either L1 or L2 are compromised. Somewhere upstream there's a loose connection. That's all that tells us right there. We've been able to determine that either L1 or L2 legs are bad. We don't have to ch check neutral. We don't suspect that neutral is bad since we know that L1 or L2 is bad. The, the, po the probability that both went bad would be extremely slim. Now, let's test this with a low Z meter. This is the Klein CL800 low Z meter. There is a link to this in the description of this video. Okay, so this is the low Z meter and I don't have to have insulated leads on these because we're not, we're going directly into the outlet. So let's just check from here to here. Now using a low Z meter, we have 14.75 volts. The low Z meter puts about a 3000 ohm resistance or impedance at the measure point. So that's enough of that actually that 3000 ohm load is actually dragging that all, that all the way down. So, but now what the low Z meter can also do, it can tell you which one of these legs is bad. So we should get around 120 volts from here to here or from here to there. So by doing this, this will tell us which one is bad. Okay, so from this leg to this leg, we have 123 volts. So we know that this leg is good. You know, and by the way, this test works just as well for three or four wire outlets because we're not involving ground. Now let's test this one with respect to neutral. Ah, so this right here we're measuring, with respect to neutral, we're measuring seven volts. So that tells us that this leg right here is compromised. It's probably there, that means there's a loose connection upstream of this leg here that is allowing it to read full voltage when you're using a traditional meter because of the high input resistance of the traditional meter. Using a low Z meter puts such a low resistance on it, creates this thing called a voltage divider that drags this voltage down and reveals that this leg is bad. So somewhere upstream here, we have a loose connection. So that's how you test that using a low Z meter. I'm getting 247 volts from leg to leg and I'm getting 120 volts from leg to neutral there and 120 volts from neutral to this leg using a traditional voltmeter. So if you went and checked this with your traditional multimeter you might think that this voltage source is fine, dismiss it and go in and try to replace the control board or something like that in the dryer and it would just send you on the wrong path. So first I'm going to show you how to do this without a low Z meter. If you don't have a low Z meter, you still, I recommend you have a low Z meter to do this, but if you don't, you can still put it under load. If you don't have a low Z meter, you didn't need to unplug this all the way. 
So what I do is I'm going to test from leg to leg. We should get around 240 volts, plus 10 or minus 5. This test works fine with uh, three wire and four wire receptacles. So what we can do is we can test the integrity of L1 and L2. Once we determine the integrity of that, we can use those as a reference to test neutral. If L1 and L2, if the integrity of L1 and L2 is not there, then we have either a bad L1 or a bad L2, and we can go on from there. So I'm going to go ahead and test L1 to L2. We should get approximately 240 volts from leg to leg. 247. Okay. Under load, we're getting 247 from leg to leg. That tells us that L1 and L2 are good. Now I'm going to test one of the legs to neutral. And what's going to happen is neutral will rise because of the impedance, the resistance inside the dryer. If neutral is floating, it's going to pull neutral up to the level of either L1 or L2. So I'm going to go ahead and connect the neutral here. One side to neutral, and then the other side to this leg here. And I've got 3.7 volts. So what does that tell us? That tells us that neutral is only 3.7 volts away from L1, which means it's being pulled all the way up to L1 practically. So that means that neutral is sitting at whatever, 120 volts minus 3.7. So it's sitting at about 116 volts. And neutral should always be zero volts with respect to ground. So this tells us we have a bad neutral here. Now this is how you would test it if you have a low Z meter. Backlight on, maybe it'll be a little more legible. Okay, so this is the low Z meter. Okay, this puts about a 3000 ohm impedance across the test leads here. Hold that so you can read it. All right, so I'm gonna test from leg to leg and we're getting 247 volts. So that tells us right there that leg to leg is good because we just put a load on it and we read 247 volts. All right, well, let's test from leg to neutral. We should be getting about 120 volts here. We're getting seven volts, seven volts. So that means the low Z meter is pulling this all the way up to, all the way up to within seven volts of L1. Let's try it with respect to L2. We're getting seven volts also. So it's pulling neutral up to within seven volts of L2, which means that this is pulling, either one of these legs is pulling neutral up to about 113 volts. Neutral should not do that. So this clearly tells us we have a bad neutral right here. You can do this with a four wire or a three wire cord. It doesn't matter because we're not involving ground in this test here. That's it for this video. I hope you found it interesting and informative. If so, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel.